What's up, my dudes? Valk here, and I know I'm going to be. I know these are like old, like holy crap, Valk. Have you not? How do you not know what these characters do? They've been out for forever, uh, but I don't know what they do. So I'm going to read Scaramouche Day. I'm going to see what I think about them. Um, well, the Wanderer. I'm going to read Scaramouche, see what I think about them, and kind of just go from there and see exactly where we're at. We'll go over the constellations in a second. I want to read this. So I so before I get into this, let me give you the gist of the knowledge I have of him. I know his ult. I know he likes steps. I know for his skill, he goes in the air and floats around, and then he can do like his normal attacks get converted into slashes, or I guess it doesn't get converted. I guess it's just normal. Um, he's a catalyst user. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead. First, let's fight Control Stick Drift. Now let's go ahead and read what he does. Um. He's Catalyst, so I guess that makes sense. His charge attack multiplier, though, is actually pretty high for uh, level 1. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so concentrates the power of the winds to break free from the shackles of the earth. Uh, you figure that would be like Vinthi, right? The winner cannot perform plunging attacks in the state. He, when he uses normal and charge attacks, they will be converted. So they do get converted. Okay. Kugo Fushudan and Kugo Tufo. What was it? Tufukai? <laughs> okay. Uh, the damage they deal in the area will be increased, and their damage will be considered normal charge attack damage, respectively. That's cool. So, normal attack build actually would make sense here with Skittermoosh. Uh, while the state is active, the Wanderer's movements gain the following properties. Persistently consumes Kikoroki points to maintain the hovering state. So, that's the extra bar that I've seen. So, he has, like, a stamina bar. Additional will be consumed from the Wanderer's to accelerate mid-air, holding spirit will will cause consistent point consumption okay jumping expands extra points to increase the hovering height holding jump will cause to keep increasing height so he can literally fly i thought this was like gliding no he actually can just fly that's <laughs> that's pretty funny uh initial kiyoroki points 100 okay uh compresses the this is the stomp right the characters in the wind favored state due to the skill wind favored state will end at the casting so he comes down to the ground just stomps on a big circle and it does 147.2 times five that's actually really really high and a low cost at 60 so that's pretty good i don't for once i don't think ryan pa shogun pairs very well with him because he's a main damage dealer he doesn't need energy i think uh he does pretty good on his own uh the song Song of Wind, which is his skill, comes in contact. When it is unleashed, this instance will obtain buffs according to the contacted element. Point cap increased by 20, so you go to 120 stamina, essentially. Well, it's not stamina, it's its own thing, but yeah, you get the idea. Pyro increases attack by 30%. Cryo increases crit rate by 20%. The normal charge attack hit an opponent, 0 0.8 energy will be restored. Energy can be restored so once every 0 0.2 seconds, so... Electro, it's kind of useless because, like I said, he doesn't really need energy. It's 60 energy cost. That's pretty easy to keep up. Cryo, though, is really nice. 20% is no small feat. When the Wanderer hits opponents with uh, his normal charge attack in wind favored state, he has a 16% chance to obtain the decent effect, or descent effect. Uh, the next time the Wanderer accelerates in mid air while in this instance of wind favored state, the effect will be removed. The acceleration instance. And he gives a point to fire four wind arrows that deal 35% of his attack is animo damage. So he can apply animo pretty frequently. Um, so far, he seems not like insane, but fun, right? Like, I never got to play him. I didn't play the trial version of him. But the ability to just fly around, that sounds really cool, right? I don't think he's like anything groundbreaking. I wouldn't put him in like a top 10 best unit in the game just by reading his kit. Uh, but it does look like he's perfectly serviceable as a DPS, because once again, this game's pretty easy. Uh, perfectly serviceable as a main damage dealer, and most of all, really fun. Which I think is, like, the most important thing whenever you're considering a character inside Genshin Impact. Because the game's so casual, so the one thing I'd be looking to, instead of how high can I get this damage, how high can I get a single instance of damage on a character to be, I'd be more so looking to how fun a character is, right? And to me, he looks really fun. Like, he he's really breaks the standard mold. The ability to fly around is kind of crazy. The attack speed is increased by 10%. That's pretty good. Additionally, the wind arrow is fired by passive. The only additional 25% of his attack is damaged. So it goes with the 55% or 60. Was it 35 or 30? Um, It was 35. Okay, so it goes up to 60%. 
that's actually pretty good. You must unlock the first talent first, yeah. Uh, when in the wind favored state, five ceremonial plays will see its damage increase by five points. Kyogen is his normal attack, right? Yeah. By 4% per point of difference between the maximum amount of Kyogen points contrasted with the present capacity when using the skill. Through this method, you can increase the five ceremonial plays damage by a maximum of 200%. Uh, so the way I'm reading it, it's increases the damage the over time because the more the less points you have uh compared to the cap it goes up and it caps out at 200 percent so it's really good i want to say just for your normal attack damage because kilkin five ceremonial plays is your normal attack right uh no it's not it's his ult oh it's his ult. Five ceremony places his ult. Okay, so it increases his ult damage whenever you use it. If you use it towards the end, you get maximum value out of it. So just a big ult damage boost. I see. When casting Song of Wind, um, with the pass, should the passive Jade Claim Flower? Is that the one? Jade Claim Flower. Okay, so this is the other one. Should be triggered. The character will gain buffs and correspond to contact elements. Also retain an un. Random untriggered buff. A maximum of three corresponding elements of buffs can exist simultaneously. So you can use... Basically what this is saying is you can use Sacrificial Catalyst. Or whatever it is. You can use that to actually reset it to get an extra buff. So you can't get all four buffs. But you can get three buffs. But realistically you're only getting two. This is kind of useless. Because, I mean, it's like, yeah, a lot of these are really good. But imagine, like, you get Electro a bunch of times, uh, which you don't really need, because, you, like I said, 60 energy cost is not a lot. Like, it's very easy to keep up. Uh, so you you Swirl Cryo, and you get Electro buff. Or you Swirl Cryo, you get Hydro buff, which just increases the cap by 20. But that increases the damage of this. So, I guess... When the Wonder actively hits an opponent with Kuko Fusho down while in the wind favored state, I gotta make sure. I don't know why they just can't say normal charge attacks. Okay, so that's normal attacks. Alright. Deals an additional instance of Fusho down at the position hit, dealing 40% of attacks original damage. This damage will be considered normal attack damage, so it double hits on damage. That's kind of nutty. Uh, when the Wonder falls with flow, 40 Kuko Rocket points restores 4 points to him. Can restore this mana once every 0 0.2 seconds. The restoration can occur up to five times within one to one favorite duration. All right, so you can basically have almost 100% of time on a skill with C6. Uh, but in the end, looking at all this, even at C6, I think his damage is not, like I said, insane. I don't think it's like some of the best damage in the game. Like we've seen with like Yelan, for example. Yelan at C6 is like one of the best absolute damage dealers in the game. Um, I think his damage is still really, really good. Like I said, perfectly serviceable. But he looks mostly just fun. Like, they actually built an entire character. Even his C6 just accentuates the fun mechanic of it, right? His C6 allies within his C2. C6 plays in his C2. Um, but, yeah, his C6 just literally just makes him more fun. Which I think is a really cool direction they should go, especially since they want this game to be really casual. I really, really like the direction they went with the Wanderer with Scaramouche. I think he's, uh, I think he's, don't think he's like the best, but I think he's good, and I think he looks really, really, really fun. Um, I really hope they design more characters like that, like just based around how fun they are to play, and not exactly, you know, big damage numbers. Oh, he was growling at me. I was like, what is that noise? <laughs> Not exactly around big damage numbers, but yeah, I still have Farzan, Layla, and Nilo on the horizon. I plan on reading these three in videos in the future. I'll let you guys know what I think of them too whenever I get through them. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.